Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sands. Now today in our Millennial Mom segment brought to us by Romulus Entertainment, we are chatting with Lauren Conlon. Now Lauren is a New York-based entertainment contributor and journalist for Pop Style TV, and she also has a weekly entertainment news podcast called Lauren Interviews. And most importantly, she is my dear friend and fellow mom to two amazing kiddos. Shout out to Paisley and MJ. And today we are discussing what women really want in a relationship and all that you guys out there should keep in mind. Now, as Oscar Wilde put it, men always want to be a woman's first love and women like to be a man's last romance. It's often said that men and women's brains work so differently that one sex is from Venus and that the other one is from Mars. Well, yes, actually, there is a new study now supporting this hypothesis after finding out that 1,000 genes are much more active in one gender than another. That's pretty indicative. Now, at the end of the day, any good relationship is built on some basic down-to-earth qualities. While superficial stuff like good looks and sexual chemistry are some of the early indicators of compatibility, there are a few more significant must-have characteristics that women look for. And while no two women are the same, there are basic essentials that all women want in a man. And here to break it all down for us is Lauren Conlon. Welcome to the show, Stunner. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is so much fun. Yeah, different than our usual. Uh, usually we're meeting for happy hour, but now it's all work. Yes, so it's all work. I, I have a coffee instead of wine, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, good. I, I, I think that's a good thing. Coffee instead of a wine. But listen, love and affection are the foundations here. And I know that at least I do long for affection in my relationship. And whether you're a newlywed or you've been married for, um, you know, 14 years in my case, um, I always feel that men should try to be sweet in their words and kind in their deeds more than anything else. What's your take on that? So I read the book, The Five Love Languages, when I was getting married. Our pastor had us read that at my church. And it really got me thinking that my husband and I, Matt, his love languages are completely different than my love languages. So you mentioned um, doing things for each other. So my love language is acts of service. And I'm talking like a really, really small act of service, like making the bed. You have no idea how far that goes for me or just making the kids breakfast in the morning. I mean, that to me is like, I don't know what I can say on this sexually wise, whatever I, you know, I, that is, you know, he, he it's definitely, something. it's definitely a turn on. Yes, it is a turn on. It is a turn on when he does that stuff. So, I mean, guys, just get to know your woman's love language. And then, I mean, you can't really go wrong if you just focus on that. If your woman doesn't care about, you know, words of affirmation, which Zen, you mentioned that's something that you like, then, you know, you don't have to compliment her all the time, just the acts of service. So and it's like, it just depends on the woman. I agree. And get you to know, know her. If without a doubt, you know, get to know, you definitely have to get to know her. But, you know, a bit of admiration can also do wonders. Um, so, you know, praising her for her qualities, right? Like, you know, if you're, if you, if you have, if your wife's a good cook, if she's a good painter, a great homemaker, a caring mother, whatever it is, a, a successful career woman who is a, a real pro at her work. I'm a huge advocate, respect her dedication to her work and not, you know, don't insult her work and mm -hmm. don't make it competitive because I feel like in relationships, it goes to whose time is more valuable and how the tasks have to be split down the middle. And this is a huge issue, I, I think, for a lot of families in where you have mom giving a dad a checklist of listen, this is what I do every day. And then he does the same. And I just, I, I feel like that competition needs to stop and everybody needs to just do that 50, 50 split. Yeah. I feel like the 50, 50 split, it's never going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I think now it's happening more. Um, obviously when I was growing up, you know, it was a little bit different. Dads didn't change as many diapers, blah, blah, blah. And now dads are changing more diapers and they're watching their kids and people are actually saying, oh, you're watching your kids and you're not babysitting. That drives me insane. <laughs> Completely oh. insane. I'm like, you're watching your kids. You're not babysitting. Um, but no, I, I don't think it's going to be like that. Uh, the 50-50, I, I really don't. 
just because I think, I feel like most moms, right? Most moms just have this special bond with their kids and dads have a bond as well. It's just different. I agree. So I know that every family, you know, also is unique in their own way. So I'm not saying that, you know, a mom has to be the number one caretaker. I just think, um, I don't know. I think it's always going to be mama first. Mama first, right. And, you know, yeah. I meant more so the 50-50 in the sense that you're right. I could never get my husband to do some of the things that Alexa wants me there for, like mm -hmm. sleep in the bed with me every night, mom, and make sure you're there, you know, at a certain time to put me down and, you know, all and every weekend. And she, my daughter needs like a fair or I don't know what she's been accustomed to, but she thinks that every weekend it's going to be like this big expedition and adventure where I'll yeah. have to do something every weekend. And sometimes you just want to sit back and relax, bringing me down to having, you know, giving her space. A woman's life is not just about her husband and kids. And, you know, you and I have talked about this a lot, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, spending time with friends or having a calm evening, even just reading a book, uh, women deserve private time after all the hard work that we put in to keep our husbands and our children happy. Uh, and, and so I feel like it, if we go through this pattern of never giving ourselves that, that, time become mm -hmm. frustrated and, and angry. I don't know. How do you feel about that? I need yeah. that time. No, a hundred percent. I flipped out at my husband like two weeks ago because he was doing all of these um, weekend trips, you know, with his friends or whatever. And I was like, oh, hell no. It's like, I have, you know, and again, I love my kids. I, do I have to keep saying that over and over? I hope not. Uh, I hope you all know I love my kids. Let me just bitch about them. Um, But no, I love my kids. But like, I don't want to be the sole entertainer slash caretaker, you know, multiple weekends in a row. So last weekend, I basically told him, I was like, look, I will take the kids, you know, to their karate lesson in the morning. And then the rest of the day from 11 to 6, I'm getting my hair done. I'm, you know, working out. I'm doing, you know, whatever stuff for me. And my husband understands. He's like, okay, I, you a hundred percent need that. Go for it. You know? And so it's not, you know, he, he's, he's good when it comes to, to that stuff. Like he understands when I'm at my breaking point and he knows that I'm not going to be doing anyone any good when I'm at that point, when I'm like ready to just, you know, kill everybody. Oh yeah. So and and, he understands and bringing mommy. us yeah. to ready to kill somebody. I also want a man who could handle my tantrums and, and my husband does, <laughs> does, and my tantrums really well. Um, you know, look, women can throw tantrums just like a kid does. You know, and mm. you know, you might be in 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 one of those crazy mood swings. You know, and you and something might make you upset, and you know, you out of nowhere snap. I mean, this is human nature. It actually happens more than we admit. But mm -hmm. I want somebody who can just brush that off. You know, I don't want to be like with a check yeah. mark. You had a tantrum. Yeah. Check. No, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. And again, that's why I think we look for partners that, um, you know, compliment us. And it's funny, Zen, after I gave birth, my PMS got so, so bad that um, about a week before I was supposed to have my period, I would just go crazy. I was in the worst mood. And I'm generally a pretty positive, happy person. I, you know, I've got I've got days where, you know, but like, I'm telling you, it was like a week where even my husband, my kids, they were hiding from me. So, <laughs> and like, now they know they're like, oh, it's that week where mommy is like, and I'm, I'm becoming more aware of it, but it is so funny. Like a woman's body. It's like, I am so aware of how I have no patience that week. I have zero. Yeah. Like, nobody can do anything right. They can't even chew or like breathe around me or else oh, I'm like, no. yeah, I know it's bad. But you know what? It's okay. Cause at least you're honest about it. And you know, at the end of the day, there, it has to be that balance of having a partner, a, a best friend, so to speak, and make it, you know, really about the, the family environment, but also about him and about you individually. Uh, mm -hmm. And I also, the, a, a really important topic I'm going to bring up is I for for the guys out there that snoop in your in your woman's phone or that checks phones and emails i mean you guys wouldn't like it if we read your messages on your whatsapps or your emails and in the same capacity we don't want that privacy breached as well and it has nothing to do with if i'm 
hiding something or whatnot. Mm. I just don't, I just give me the benefit of the doubt and don't be in, you know, up in my stuff. And I just feel like that lends itself to such bad patterns and behaviors that if you're comfortable with each other, there should be none of that. Yes. And I, I don't have that problem. I don't go into his phone. He doesn't go into mine. I definitely don't care. Um, not that I don't care. I just, I'm kind of like, you know, I, I trust him. And it's funny because I am the one that's probably out more um, between the two of us. And he trusts me as well. And he knows like, I am very outgoing. I'm a big giant flirt, but I do it all right in front of his face as well. <laughs> so he knows like, this is how far it goes. Um, you know, this is, this is where it goes. I'm going to come home to you. You don't have to worry about anything. And like, yes. Should I probably tone it down sometimes? Absolutely. Um, and the reason I do that is because I'm thinking about him and saying, okay, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to be respectful. But no, he, we trust each other. And, um, and yeah, I, but I do know, like, if I was with someone different, if I was with a guy with maybe um, a shorter temper than my husband or... Right. You, you know, would maybe, skew it differently. It would be a very different dynamic. And I just, I'm lucky. Yeah. Well, listen, at the end of the day, the most important thing is having a guy that makes you feel safe and comfortable. And I know that you are um, in a great place in your life and you have a great family and a great supportive husband. So that's one step ahead of most. Thank you. Lord. Thank well, you. We have run out of time, but listen, thank you so much for coming on. It was very fun chit chatting with you. And I yes. definitely encourage all of you to check out Lauren Conlon and her interviews. She's on the gram. She's everywhere. I definitely check her out. Thank you so much for coming on my love. Thanks then. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR. The voice of New York. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 